and welcome to Let's Get Local at uh, 101 Business Media and Radio. Uh, welcome to all of the subscribers around the world. Apparently, it's well over 600,000 subscribers now. Wow. So, everyone around the world, hello and welcome again to Let's Get Local. We've been having an absolute blast on the show so far and throwing up a whole bunch of YouTube videos. We hope you've really been enjoying them. And uh, it's been really exciting bringing in some uh, absolutely brilliant local West Australian musicians and uh, showing them all to you and getting a bit personal with them. And uh, I'm uh, really, really happy today. I've got lovely gentleman next to me here, Mr. Lee Miller. Welcome. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for inviting me. No worries. Hello, everybody out there in subscriber land. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, thanks for coming on to Let's Get Local. You're another uh, local Perth. Boy, and yep. uh, born and bred in, in Perth, Western Australia. Yeah, proud town groper. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, I've been lucky enough to be a musician most of my life. So, awesome. Yeah. Now, Lee is a bass player, so um, he's actually not going to play some songs for us today, but we're going to have a really good chat and get to know exactly where he's come from, what he's doing now, and um, yeah, so. Tell me, how long have you actually been basing up a storm? Um, I started playing bass in high school. Okay. So when I was 13, I'm now 36. So what's that, 23 years? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just one of those things when, when you sort of become old enough, uh, going into high school, you start getting into music and liking bands. And for me, um, Pop music then was very much rock and roll based. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, we're talking like the early to mid '90s, so with yeah. grunge and that's that sort of music was happening. So in those days, everyone kind of wanted to emulate playing guitar or being in a yes. band, and we all had long hair and black yeah. t-shirts. And yeah. so I think I was drawn to the bass. Purely just by a, a default thing where okay. a friend of mine had a drum kit and another friend had a guitar. So somehow I actually knew what a bass was. So I thought, <laughs> oh, if I get a bass, then we can start a band. It can be a band. Yeah. Cool. And I uh, basically haven't looked back since. Have you ever picked up or touched any other instruments? Like have you yeah. tried other things and still always your love is bass, is it? Yeah, I've, I've, bass is my number one love for sure. Yeah. But... Um, over the journey, I've definitely had some experience on other instruments. I think it's important to do so, especially if, you, or if you're a songwriter yes. or arranger, to have some kind of understanding of how the drums work, how the guitar works, how the piano works, um, writing for a particular voice in different yep. ranges and things like that. And particularly now, since that time, since the 90s, how music and music production has evolved over the yes. years. So you really need to have an understanding of like the electronic side of stuff and with yes. recording, producing, um, yeah, working with keyboards and electronic instruments and things like that. So, but bass is, uh, has and always will be my my number one love. It's your your heartthrob. Yeah. Your heartthrob. Yeah, yeah. Outside of your your uh, lovely gorgeous girlfriend, of course. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yes. Yeah. And they they are a close par, aren't they? <laughs> Absolutely. If you, if you I, had to um, choose between one or the other. <laughs> well, there was never it's never a choice. But I've been lucky up up to the age my age I'm at now to be a full time musician and pursue a career in music. Yeah. Now I guess I'm taking some time out to pursue more personal avenues yeah. and with, with my girlfriend, Andrea. Yeah. I'm expecting our first child in about six weeks' time. Ooh, exciting. So that's very exciting. So uh, I've been lucky yeah. to sort of be able to pursue both, I suppose. Excellent. Um, and once once Andrea and I have got our heads around having a child and, and, and getting used to that, yeah lifestyle then perhaps we'll, we can work out a balance where both uh, can work in in unison and in harmony together yes beautiful <laughs> just take the kids on tour throw them in the bus you'll be right yeah hit the road hit the well, road i suppose i'm very lucky in that regard yep. that andrew's very supportive and understanding of my um chosen career path so that's fantastic so that really helps um but yeah I, you know i'm I've taken some time out from what I've been doing over the last few years 
just because you know I want to be there, for, be a dad, and be a good dad, and yeah. and be there for her, and and try this family thing out. Yeah, good on <laughs> you. Nice work. And I I am truly excited for you. I mean, we've known each other for a little while now, and um, we've uh, been able to work together in the past, and yeah. I've really, really. Uh, had many many fantastic memories of working with you guys yeah. and, um, I know you're on a bit of a different journey now with with band wise we're going to touch on that in a minute but yeah. I know I met you through um, when you were with the band for Delhi yeah and you did heaps of touring we're just talking about throwing the kids in the bus yeah. where <laughs> have you been Lee you have been all over the place yeah you? oh it's, it's been great I, I I joined Videli uh, in 2010, so that was seven years ago. Um, and basically, on average, the band would tour Europe once or twice a year, every year. Wow. Um, we also played a festival in Thailand. Wow. Um, Michael and I actually did a duo gig together in Sri Lanka. Wow. Um, we played over east in, in Canberra, in Sydney. Um, not as Videli, but Michael and I did, did two gigs over there, which yeah. was really cool. Yeah. Uh, and then for the last two and a half years, up till June this year, I actually lived in Hamburg, Germany with Michael, um, pursuing the band full time over there. Fantastic. So yeah. r- mainly where were you based throughout Europe? Like are you, uh, your Germany is your base and then you yeah. go from there? Germany was our base. The band uh was signed to a record company called mm-hmm. Jazz House Records, mm-hmm. which are a German record company. Um, they also happen to be an international booking agency. Right. So I guess you could say uh, unofficially we had like a 360 kind of deal where yes. um, we put out on average an album maybe one a, once a year or t- once every two years. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were our um, booker for Europe, so they book all the tours. Uh, they also published a couple of the albums as well. Um, and our tour manager, uh, Mr. Mark Rana, he actually worked for the label as well up in the agency arm. So it helped when we were on the road to having someone who's part of the company as well. Yeah. Uh, so our main focus was Germany, but we played in a lot in the surrounding countries of Germany. So for example, Switzerland, Austria, uh, France, Denmark, Poland, Czech Republic, Slovakia. Uh, wow. Then we were lucky enough, we played in, in London twice, the 100 Club, it's a famous club, and Oxford Street. We played the Sweden Rock Festival twice, wow. uh, 2012 and 2014. And that was uh, particularly memorable, memorable for me. Yeah, one of your favourite. Well, the 2012 was, was a big one because yeah. it's the first kind of huge major festival that I'd played with the band Mm -hmm. um and i remember we were on a small stage there was like five stages Mm -hmm. uh sort of like a big day out set up where they had like these the two main stages and we were on this small stage over here but the programming was such that bands didn't really clash in time slots so it was quite interesting while we were setting up on sound checking on our small stage Lynn and Skinner were playing on the massive stage opposite us. Don't. So it was sort of cool that Lynn and Skinner played, oh. and then Videli played, oh. and then Motley Crue played. So oh. that, was, that was kind of cool. Wow. Um, definitely a, a very cool memory I have of my time. Huge, huge, um, yeah. Well, a lot of people don't actually, like, for anyone out there who thinks the band's just, you know, book a few gigs and go touring, there is so much involved. And... Um, you guys were really, really fortunate to score that 360 kind of uh, effect that you had happening because yeah. a lot of bands will struggle for the publishing, the distribution, the tour booking. There's a lot that goes into touring and, and getting big festivals like that. Yeah, so yeah. and I think it's... Guy. I, I was. I, I joined the band sort of at the right time where all of that had already been yeah. Um, achieved. Yeah. So, But it's worthwhile mentioning particularly that for Michael and, and Rick Whittle, who's the drummer, that it didn't just fall into the lap. That, that no. actually came from years and years of hard work and yes. hard slog and sleeping on floors and sleeping yeah. on couches yeah. and really touring relentlessly yeah. and kind of coming at it the old school way where okay. um, it was a word of mouth thing that got the band yeah. sort of a vibe around the band mm-hmm. and then... I think it was back in um, 2007 or 2008 before I joined the band. 
Michael was lucky enough to secure um, the services of, I can't think of the producer's name. What was his name? He did uh, Silverchair and Led Zeppelin oh, and Aerosmith okay. and it would come to me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but So they did an album with this guy and then they went around and knocked on people on record companies' doors in Europe. Yeah. And we're lucky enough to they got a got a bite, so to speak, with Jazz House. So. so for you, the timing was perfect. You didn't have to sleep on all the floors. No, I didn't. I didn't. I was, <laughs> you I was lucky came in that in regard. Bed. <laughs> That's right. And I'm grateful for the opportunity as yeah, well. Um, but you know, the hard work was still to be done. Once you get you getting signed is getting signed, but then there's the actual going out and touring, um, and that was particularly hard work. But very enjoyable, very rewarding. Um, and you are so, I have to say, Lee's so social media savvy. I love, <laughs> you know, your your interaction and your input and how much work that you really do put into it. Do you think, um, you know, that having started so long ago, do you think social media has really, like, had an impact on exposure and, and makes a difference to bands today, say, compared to, you know, when... We were young and uh, and you were up and coming. Obviously, there's a lot of uh, changes in the world now for musicians and your exposure capabilities through social media. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's um, it's a case of, for me, it's a case of Charles Darwin theory. Yes. Either you adapt or you die. That's correct. So um, in terms of the inter- internet and social media, yep. I mean, my, my point of view, my main thing is the internet actually killed the record industry. Ah, okay. Well, <laughs> don't go anywhere uh, there because we are going to be right back. We're going to keep chatting to Lee Miller here and we're going to touch on every all, all the new stuff. In-